the sword in 1916, when the sword Act in 1960 was promulgated that provided for three elected commissioners that were elected at town meeting. Then in 1952, there was another act of the legislature, and that took the sanitary department, the water, the sewer, and uh, uh, the recreation department, a lot of those things that were separate and incorporated under the Department of Public Works, again with the three-person elected uh, board, board of uh, commissioners. Then when the charter was revised in 1991, all of those functions were transferred to the Board of Selectmen and combined with the Board of Selectmen with duties and responsibilities. In uh, the current charter, there is no mention of any of that, but the council advises that even though the charter is silent on those, the previous charter carries forward. So in terms of the status of water, um, at some level I didn't know how much I had to put down here because I think we all know we can't wash our cars and we have you know, problems with the quantity of water we have. We have water bands. You know, we recently, or some months ago, lost one of the wells at Rothman Avenue. We then had to go onto full outside watering bands, which means that we don't have a lot of extra or capacity. There is, a, there is a thing called White Pond, many of you may know about it. Years ago, before Rothman Avenue, that was the source of water for Maynard. When the environmental <laughs> DEP passed regulations that said it was no longer uh, proper just to chlorinate the pond, you had to put in really extensive sprinklers to make sure bird droppings and things like that related bacteria were filtered out, where they elected to discontinue using that pond and to drill the wells of Rockland Avenue. Uh, that's still a water source we have, and there have been several studies that have done by citizens groups to look at whether we should do it. The last one was five or six years ago, and there was a recommendation at that time that we should begin to look to reactivate that pond. There was no action taken on that at that time. Recently in May, the town meeting approved some small amount of funds to begin the engineering studies for that, and the selectmen signed a contract with Stantec a couple of weeks ago to implement that uh, town meeting funding. So it is being worked on, but it's just in my view, it's years away. And there's some other wells that uh, the, the Department of Public Works is looking at in the existing wall areas. But it's pretty clear, at least to me, that we have a water shortage. In terms of sewer, we have about 21% of our capacity left. And so what's capacity? Sometimes people look at the sewer, you know, our sewer process and plant and say, that does 2 million gallons, we're only doing a million gallons. We have plenty, but the real gating item on how much sewer we can process is we have a permit from the state to discharge the affluent into the Aspen River after it's been processed. That number is 1.4 million gallons. On a peak, peak periods, we, we uh, process more than a million. So I could go through the arithmetic if anybody would like, but we have 21% of that left. So the question then is, what are we going to do with that? And that's really the purpose along with water, for me being here, is to see, do we have a good plan and a plan that you all agree with as to what we're going to do with that 21%. So there are things going on right now that will use up some of that. The Parker Street, one for Parker Street project is not in those numbers because those numbers are actual numbers. The middle main is half filled, if that were to become fully filled, they have a right to use that capacity. The Strauss property, right now there's a sign here that says 37 acres for sale. That's another probability that that will be developed in the near future. And then we have other shorter term things we know that are in Birmingham, Gruber's Brothers Building, Summer Street. But the important thing for, for, for me for this is, 
that the $1.4 million is highly likely to ever increase. State and its environmental concerns has a tendency to not increase our ability to do those things. Could happen, but I don't think so. So when you're looking at sewer, it's something that our predecessors did for us. It's a major asset we have, allows us to have restaurants and a lot of businesses. But we need to look at that, and I would say 100 years from then people get upset. So we need to kind of say, OK, well, the next 50 years, what are we going to need to do with that sewer? And we want to develop new businesses. We want to get more tax revenue. This is the asset. So the question is, what do we do with the 21%? And then, as I'm sure we all know, you know we don't really have a, a detailed assessment of the source system. We have information, but we don't really have something that says some percentage of the pipes are need to be replaced. We know pipes need to get replaced. How do we know that? Well, we know that because pipes break, some people have sewage in their basements. And we have camera evidence from the Park Street project and from the proposed pattern of place project that said a good portion of those pipes have spiral fractures, they have depressions, and depressions meaning material in there lays in the bottom of the pipes and reduces the efficiency. And uh, there are places where in Park Street, when we did that, there's a 10-inch like pipe that goes to an 8-inch pipe to a 10-inch pipe, there's one section where there was no pipe. The pipe had deteriorated and the sewage was going through the, the depression made in the ground. Now, uh, Representative Hogan was able to get us to, for a little more than $3 million to work on the Park Street pipes and some of the presidential. So that's really good. That's a one-time thing. But there are, the evidence I think there is is that when we do count the pipe, there are issues. There's 47 miles of sewer pipe in Maynard. It costs $1.4 million to replace a mile. And the replacement cost, according to the town, of the system, including the plant, is $125 to $150 million. So the point is, there could be a lot of money that we need to spend to get the system back up to, to where it would be. It's still an asset. We have that 21% that we need to take care of. And I just have a quick comment that's not on the slide. And I want to say two things. The first thing is, I think that our DPW director, Aaron, is doing a really tremendous job. And nothing that I'm going to talk about is, should be taken as a negative reflection on the work he's doing. I think we're lucky to have him. But since I've lived here for 20 years, we've had four or five DPW directors. A few of them good, a few of them not so good. So even though Aaron's doing a good job, and he's trying to get us to the 20th century and maybe the 21st, it's a concern. The second thing is that none of my comments should be taken to say anything negative about the current selectmen. The system's been in place since 1916 and the water since 1888. And there are issues, but they didn't happen yesterday. And um, you know, we've gone through different management styles from commissions to the selectmen. So I don't want anybody to think that I'm singling out either Aaron or the selectmen is somehow going to cost any of this. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Well, then question, the question is, well, what do we do about that? So what this article does, or is intended to do, is to say we need to tell, recommend we need to take a pause in what we're doing with the system and selling or a scarce resource under pressure for either water or sewer would seem to me to be risky. So while the article says, don't ever do this again, this is an article, and today's today. But it certainly, we shouldn't, in my mind, continue to sell things that we really don't understand as well as we might like to. And I know that Eric and the Selectman are doing work to try to begin to do studies and some of that to begin to happen. So I think we need to revisit how do we want to manage water and sewer. And I think that we need uh, long-term plans, and we need 
business plans and we need to know what it would cost to bring both, both water and sewer up to where we would like to be. And I think there ought to be public discourse and I'm hoping this is the first meeting in the public discourse or it's not the last meeting. Now, town council has said, looks like, town council has said that should this article pass, it's not binding on the selectmen. The town council has said that essentially because of the way the 1991 charter is written and structured, that the selectmen have the authority to do pretty much anything they want with selling and any other aspect of the sewer. But even though that may be the case, and this is advisory, it seemed to me that voting in the affirmative, even if it's advisory, is a good thing to do. And hopefully better than doing nothing. So, there are some people that are concerned about what would happen if, you, if this were binding and you passed it. And so the answer is it's not binding. But even if it were, it seemed to me that once we have the plans in place, we know what we're going to do, we know how we're going to pay for it. It wouldn't be very difficult to have the town meeting take a different position if that would be the case. And if there were some of that 21% that you all think should be sold or could be sold. So, what town council said is that the selectmen have total authority to sell water or sewer wherever they would like to do that. Whether it's whether it's an adjoining town, whether it's an adjoining property or not. It also says no public hearings are required, no vote of town meeting is required. Um, rates are set with or after a public hearing, but there is no town meeting vote. But you do have the right to approve the budget and the capital spending for water or sewer at a town meeting. So that's what town council says. So the question is, next slide. The question is, what's next? And this is my opinion. I would like the board of selectmen to consider, when you vote this in the affirmative, consider your advice. I'd like to see a study group set up to review how we're currently managing and doing things and either change that or improve it as, as determined. And I'd like to see full technical and financial reviews to determine the cost and what it would take to bring things back where we'd like them to be. And I, and I think this is one of the more important points. Right now, you know, we're all thinking we need to do development, we're supporting development. We would like more revenue to help fund the schools and to help fund town services, but we sort of do these in three parts. We, we discuss the developments, and then at another time we discuss the water and the well that went down and what we're doing at, about it. And then at another time, we talk about the sewer. And so what I believe is those three things have to be done together. They have to be discussed together. And wherever we're thinking about establishing development zones, we need to pay attention to whether the water and sewer infrastructure can handle it and we bring those up to speed before we wind up doing something like we did at Park Street, which is a good project, but then we discovered there were sore problems and we were fortunate Kate Oak and helped us, but we can't count on them as to think the solution for the other problems. So I'd like to see those three I'd like to see those things integrated. Okay, and then I have one more comment if I could. And this, the fig comment is not made your comment yet, but their comments are in the water. And basically, I agree and I believe we agree on you know, the, the community that the people that signed the, uh, the warrant, and certainly I agree with everything the FinCon said. All their recommendations for transparency, strategic plan, and those were all exactly what I want to do. I don't agree that um, with their recommendation to vote no, but I agree with all the reasoning. They do mention that they think that the selectmen are perfect to keep doing this. I think the selectmen, if you've ever gone to meetings, are terribly busy and overburdened, and I think this is 
responsibility. The mayor may not be something they can handle. Again, nothing against the current selectmen. I just think we need to think about how to do this properly to not overburden things. But I think um, I agree with all our recommendations except the no vote. So yes vote says we want to kind of pause them so we more of a sort and try to figure out what to do. And then no vote says we want to keep doing things the way we're doing. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, big comment I'd like to uh, make the presentation. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is my name is Ken S. Crook, and I'm chairman of our town's finance committee. The finance committee comprises seven of your fellow citizens, five of which are present here this evening, who are appointed by the town moderator to serve town meeting voters uh, in accordance with the applicable mass general laws and the town's charter and bylaws. Maynard's Town Charter requires the Finance Committee to report in writing its recommendations on every article contained in the Town Meeting Warrant together with a statement of the reasons for such recommendation. The Committee's unanimous recommendation against approval of Article 1 and the statement of the reasons for that recommendation have been included in the warrant. However, the Committee has asked me to provide further, provide you a fuller explanation this evening. To begin, although the Finance Committee does recommend against approval of Article 1, we do wish to acknowledge the affirmative sentiments behind the citizen's petition that we're considering this evening. Even if the goals of this citizen's petition are not achieved directly and fully at this evening's meeting, the Finance Committee believes that this example of democracy in action represents a positive step. Now to detail the reasons for the Finance Committee's recommendation. The Finance Committee is aware of our Town Council, that our Town Council issued an opinion on October 3rd stating that if this article is approved in a Town Meeting vote, it would be a non-binding measure and the Board of Selectmen would remain authorized to determine whether such a sale of water and wastewater services would be appropriate and to negotiate and execute an inter-municipal agreement with another town or an agreement with a developer or resident of another town. Now beyond those reasons given in the Town Council's legal opinion, the Finance Committee believes for the following reasons that passage of this article is not in the best interest of the town. First, it appears that the message as originally written would have prohibited all sales of water and or wastewater services, even to those who are already receiving them from the town. The committee does note that the amended article appears to address this concern. Second, it appears that the measure, measure would apply to all future applications for water and wastewater services, even those that might prove advantageous to the town. An example of such an advantageous set of circumstances might be a property owner proposing a development along the town's boundaries and willing to make a substantial contribution to the town for general improvements and repairs to the town's water and sewer infrastructure. Now, this is not to suggest that such a proposal has been submitted, nor can we say that the powder mill place application currently under consideration by the Board of Selectmen is or is not such a proposal since negotiations between the developer and the Board of Selectmen have not yet begun in earnest. Rather, this is simply intended as an illustrative example of one such possibility. <coughs> Third, it appears that these prohibitions to sell water and sewer systems services would remain in place unless and until another town meeting vote reverse this mess measure, which may inappropriately delay action on future applications, even those that might prove advantageous to the town. Article 1 does not propose a temporary pause while the Board of Selectmen's decision process is clarified. Rather, Article 1 would impose a somewhat rigid barrier within the decision process that is unnecessary 
burdensome and potentially disadvantageous to the town's interests. Finally, it's the Finance Committee's view that the Board of Selectmen, in its role as Water and Sewer Commissioners, is the proper form for decisions to be made regarding the sale of water and wastewater services to those outside the town boundaries. In gathering, analyzing, and communicating information required to achieve an effective decision process, the Board of Selectmen is supported by our town administrator, Director of Maynard's Department of Public Works, Town Council, and numerous expert consultants. And decisions are made in meetings open to the Maynard community. In other words, there is already an effective decision process in place. Certainly one that, by the nature of such decisions, is perhaps lengthier and more complicated than many of us would expect, but effective nonetheless. Now, all this said, the Finance Committee also believes, in light of the significant potential risk involved and cost involved, that any such decisions by the Board of Selectmen to sell water and or wastewater services outside the town's boundary should be informed by the following measures. One, a roadmap that lays out clearly the essential steps in the decision process, particularly those steps involving opportunities for community input. This roadmap should include an estimated timeline and an initial plan for information to be gathered and analyzed to reach a decision that is in the best interest of the town. Two, a strategic plan to manage our town's finite water and sewer resources in the long term. Three, a thorough near-term and long-term cost-benefit analysis of any agreements made. Four, full transparency in all deliberations relating to any agreements being made. And five, opportunities at appropriate times throughout the decision process for the Maynard community to provide meaningful input on any agreements. These measures, if adopted, would be in keeping with the spirit of the citizens' petition that we are considering this evening, and the Finance Committee is committed to seeing that such measures are put into place. Nevertheless, for the reasons that I've outlined, the Finance Committee recommends that you vote no against the approval of Article 1. This article is not about whether to sell water or sewer services, but whether the current practice of having these decisions made in open meeting by the Board of Selectmen with the advice of the town's experts is the right process for our town. It is your Finance Committee's contention that the current practice is the right one. Mr. Moderator, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions? I'll recognize the central microphone. Patricia Keith, Maple Street. I, I'm just looking for a point of clarification. The FinCom's first part says that this is a non-binding measure, which I understand. But if it's non-binding, how can it prohibit anything? How can it apply to future applications of anything? And you know, why would it have to remain in place and be reversed by another town meeting? I mean, non-binding to me means really what we're doing is just giving town officials our opinion or our sense of what we're thinking, since the vote doesn't make anything necessarily happen. So I don't understand part two, you know, what you've listed here. I just that would be an accurate uh, interpretation. So, like so it's the town council's uh, opinion, legal opinion that was rendered. Uh, the town council, despite our confidence in her, is not the ultimate authority. All articles will go to the attorney general. And so the vote tonight, we don't think that the town council is in error. But again, the best thing is to vote this thing down and allow the current practice to go forward. Okay, but if it is non-binding, if she's right, then these it doesn't it doesn't prohibit anything, and it won't apply to any future applications. Correct? If this is non-binding. So I can tell you from the attorney general's office because we had a moderators meeting here uh, two weeks ago, and this subject came up for another ten, and the representative for the attorney general's office said that in fact town council is correct. 
This is a legislative body who can talk about the dollars and has certain other rights. But in those kinds of situations that we're talking about this evening, uh, that is in fact the situation where the selectmen are the people who make that decision and this body cannot make that decision. However, they can express their uh, concerns through a vote, but they cannot do anything legally that would bind the selectmen. You would have to do that through either voting the selectmen out or uh, affecting their budget at some future point. That was what the Attorney General said, uh, Representative said, to the moderators meeting. All right, thank you. Just one more note. If this is non-binding and there's a future issue, is this something that has to be reversed at a town meeting, or are you just covering all bases in case she's wrong? So, you may want to, at some future point, give new advice to the Board of Selectmen, but you would not be required to. They would still be free to do whatever they wish to. Uh, I understand that, but that's not what I asked. What I'm asking is, if this is a non-binding vote, regardless of how people end up voting for it, um, in the future, if this issue comes up again, let's say people vote yes, they, they don't, you know, they don't want the the selectmen to sell town water. In the future, if the if another project comes up where somebody wants that, and an article, would an article need to be brought before town meeting to reverse this vote, even though it's non-binding? So you will have expressed an opinion tonight to the selectmen. Right. And it's only that, an opinion. If you would like to come back at some future point and change that opinion or reinforce that opinion, citizens' petition would be free to do so, but they would not be required to. Okay, thank you. I'm the way at the time of my Wilson Circle. I was actually had the exact same point first part of the FinCom speech, they used non-binding, and then they started using the word impose, um, and to me that those were kind of contradictory, so, um, so that's a point. The other thing I would like to hear from right now, we haven't heard from anybody on the Board of Selectmen, and considering the gravity of this issue and the opinions of the legislative body, not the executive branch, because the town meeting is Dick says legislative. Uh, I think it's important to hear from the Board of Selectmen. Thank you. So the Board of Selectmen has not taken an official position on this. So it would be individual opinions. And would you like all five selectmen to give their individual opinion? So the FinCom took a vote, but the Board of Selectmen does not have a, an opinion. Uh, they, as individuals, they may have, but to my knowledge, they have not taken any a vote. That's interesting. Okay, so I think personally, I would like to hear from any member of the Board of Selectmen that chooses to speak, and I think that speaks volumes. Thanks. Would any of the selectmen like to give their opinion? Uh, I would expect that uh, we would seek 
town meeting vote in some fashion, whether it's through a public meeting or another source where uh, people actually have a chance to speak and vote. And I think at the current process, not a lot of that is somewhat unfortunate for those of you who are the ones who are paying the freight and paying for the, uh, the services that are so vital to our uh, economic development. Uh, you know, one of the things, if, if I had my brothers, would be that this article would have asked for uh, you know, something to the, to the effect of it would require a two-thirds vote of town meeting if we were going to uh, sell sewer or water to an outside entity. If it wasn't included in the article, I would think that, that might be helpful. But for, for a non-binding vote at this point, I think it's a, it's a, a yes vote is, is a good vote because it makes sure that the public has the opportunity to express their opinion. Thank you. Would any of the others like to vote? Mr. DeSilva. Chris DeSilva, 11th County Lane, and I favor um, a no vote for the reasons that the um, FinCom discussed and pointed out in both the warrant and tonight. But um, one of the reasons being that I think we are uh, selecting to the point that they made specifically. We have access to information that allow us to make good decisions on uh, most every, um, most everything that comes before us, and we have accurate information, as opposed to the information that was shared with us this evening. Um, you know, we have to talk about 21 percent. 21 percent is inaccurate for the remaining capacity. Our current capacity is 35 percent. We have a 12 month average average flow of 0.94 million gallons per day. We are currently permitted for 1.45 million gallons per day, so that's 28.8%. If you add in 129 Parker Street, we still have 28.8%. And with additional flow proposals for the powder mill project, we would still remain at 25.9%. Also, we have accurate information, and we have facts. The facts were presented that no town-wide assessment of pipes has been done. It's inaccurate. We're in the fifth year of an inflow infiltration sewer pipe analysis, which identifies areas in need of repair and provides assessment of critical target areas in town. At the recent town meeting, May 2018, we approved a million-dollar allocation of sewer enterprise funding for repairs to the sewer collection system. The repairs were recommendations from the water sewer assessments that have been completing over the last four years, and we also completed a town-wide assessment of the water distribution system in 2018. Frequent pipe breaks in the sewer system. The town has, has had one major sewer pipe failure in 2017 or 18, but we have had several water breaks. No issues on Parker and Powder Mill Road. We have started a 3.7 million sewer upgrade project, which Ron did mention, came through um, the generosity of the state and Kate Hogan was um, Part of the, getting that done. Major upgrades required likely is an accurate statement, but the systems are currently improving and we're reinvesting in the infrastructure. We have been lacking for a number of years, but we have been and are now reinvesting and moving in the right direction. We have done a lot of construction repairs in the last few years to our system and water and sewer facilities and have continued to continue with that completed plan. There are also official costs of estimates. Our INI program provides cost estimates for known issues in the sewer collection system. We also have cost estimates for other major water and sewer component upgrades, i.e. lift stations and force mains, water treatment plant upgrades, wall water installations, and normal wastewater capital improvements. We also have a comprehensive 10-year capital improvement plan for our water distribution and cost estimates for listed recommendations. So as a selectman, we have access to information that's factual and accurate and some of that information has not been adequately shared with you folks. And for reasons such as that, I think that this body shall remain and should remain the authority in whether or not the town mayor ever offers to sell water sewer to any entity. Gaps. 
We aren't able to level fund our schools year after year, and one way we increase our revenue is by selling our water and sewer, not just to meter residents, but to outside towns. Um, we need revenue without raising our taxes. Our taxes are high enough in this town. We charge a significantly higher rate when we do sell water and sewer to outside entities and residents outside of Maynard. And I'm not saying we should say yes to every project that comes in asking for us to sell water and sewer. I think each project deserves an intensive, fact-intensive analysis to determine if it's the right project for Maynard based on weighing the impact and the revenue that project might bring in as the FinCom suggested. But to say that we are not going to sell water and sewer at all indefinitely for the future, I think, is a disservice to Maynard and does nothing to help this town. My name is Armand Yermakirian for 14 here back. Um, I am actually in favor of voting a yes vote on this. And I do understand and I'm sympathizing with the fact that uh, as residents, we are always asked to cough up money. And I understand that the town is always looking for sources of revenue. I don't believe that the asset that we have, which is probably our largest asset in reality, is the sewer system. Our surrounding towns don't have it. And I understand they want our sewer system. That is, in my opinion, a huge asset. And we should be very careful on how we sell that asset if we don't have the correct information. And I, yes, I am uh, obviously very happy that we have the supporting mechanism that we behind us with everybody that's in place in town. But as, as a selectman, I have a very difficult time thinking that I'm a, a water commissioner or a sewer commissioner. It's had to, I have a difficult time getting, getting that through my head at this point in time as a personal opinion. So with that said, I am in favor of a yes vote on this article. Some pumps into the system, 
the pipes leak. So if you take the 10% the off and then you do the arithmetic, it's 21%. Arithmetic that Chris gave is right, but not if you assume you're not going to full capacity, and not if you assume peak. The other comment that I would make is the other comment that I would make is in 1888 when White's Pond was given by act of the legislature to mayor, it was specifically only for mayor and council. As said in the past five years ago, at the last study, we can't sell it. Now that could be changed. Other act could be taken, but the facts are just like people say, well, today, this article would restrict things. We're restricted from South and White's Bond. And the way that the state does this is they allow us a certain amount of water withdrawal per year per person in Maynard. So if we had White's Bond online, it would mean we'd have enough water. It wouldn't mean we could sell it. Now, there might be a way we could figure that out, but there isn't any way to that. Thank you. I'm Jan Jones, I live on Nick Lane, and I'm not sure who's in, well, yeah, this is a question for, I guess, the Board of Select and anyone who choose to answer. I liked one of the points that the FinCom made tonight about suggesting that when they decide about, make a decision such as this, the Board of Selectmen should consult a strategic plan to manage these finite resources for the long term. My understanding is that there was a community development plan made in the early 1990s and that the town is currently in the process of putting together a town, a general town management plan which ought to include the town resources. Do we have a current strategic plan in place and if not, how can we ever consider selling water or not selling water without such a plan? So again, the selectmen have taken no official position, so there would have to be five individual answers. Okay, I'm this, is, this is more to ask, is there, do we have in place a strategic plan for these I, resources? I will tell you that there is currently a master plan in process. There is a committee that uh, is working on the master plan. They have a full agenda with consultants that uh, Vanessa Hagen, the engineer, I guess they call themselves now engineers, are uh, working on. So uh, those topics will be brought up as part of that national plan. Well, those are good things. I don't think we should be selling water until we have a plan like that in place. How else do we know what we're doing? And I guess that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. If any selectmen would like to speak to that, I would ask them to go to the floor to speak as an individual. So, given, given that the... Would you please go to the floor? I'm not going to speak to that. Hey, we're here. I don't know which one you're to speak to that. Okay. We have Aaron, the cost bill, the director of the EPW, speak to the plan that she, she inquired about. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. This one doesn't work either. All right, so we'd like to do it again class bill directly to DPW to discuss the plan that the lady just asked about. Ah, uh, yes. Um, put that in relation to townwide, um, 
our town-wide uh, water and sewer consumption is 215 million gallons per year, uh, so it's uh, a relatively low, low number in comparison. Um, of those 32 properties that are outside of town, three of those are small commercial businesses, and the rest of them are residential properties. Uh, in my time, uh, two and a half years as director of public works, I've only had received one out-of-town application for to connect to our sewer system. Um, that was a hardship situation uh, where the residents' septic system failed, and uh, you know risk replacement costs were upwards of forty thousand dollars, and they were willing to pay anything less than forty thousand to connect to, uh, to our system. Um, typically, that's what happens. A lot of these communities, uh, these properties that surround the town of Maine that are connected to our system are very small parcels, and it's very difficult for them to have both well water and septic system on that one parcel. Um, so they opt to connect to uh, you know our system. And historically, they've ran mains or long extensions to connect to the system, um, those surrounding properties. Any other questions? I recognize the market on the car. I'm Rick Anderson from 19 Parker and Maine. Um, since, there, since there are water restrictions and water bans, I don't understand why we would. If we had plenty of capacity of water and plenty of capacity of sewer, I, I don't think they would be an issue. But since clearly we don't, and if we have water bans, I don't understand why we would sell our water and our sewer when we already have existing bans and restrictions. That's it. Thank you. Way. I just want to understand, because the FinCom committee said if there's a yes vote to this, it sets a, a very rigid guideline, I guess it is, for, for the vote of never selling, as one of the uh, selectmen said, never selling any water or sewer to another town or entity outside of Maine. But if this golden opportunity came by, that we could sell and would definitely benefit Maynard. Can we not go back to another town meeting and vote to change this back? Can it be voted to be changed back? So the finest lady said, if the town council were incorrect, then it would become binding, and that would become very rigid, and they couldn't do anything. However, based on the attorney general's things to the moderator's meeting, it truly is not binding. So we could go back to town meeting and change it and say, okay, this golden opportunity came by and we could sell water or, or sewer down the line. So it wouldn't be necessary because the selectmen are free to do, do whatever they want. What you vote this evening. Exactly. The selectmen are free to take advantage of the golden opportunity whether you vote yes or no. Okay, so that's exactly it. So even if we vote yes to, to prohibit this, the selectmen can still go back and do what they feel is appropriate. That is correct. Okay, thank you. I recognize the microphone to my right. 58 Pablo Mill Road. I would first like to point out that town council's opinion as far as I'm concerned, carries no weight in this matter because our original charter and two revisions absolutely prohibit town council for giving an opinion on a petitioned article. It specifically exempts petitioned articles from opinions from town council. And I, I don't know, but I've attended a number of meetings and it seems that the dictionary doesn't count anymore because evidently the word exempt is not in there. Okay, so but, is there I, I will say. I also, Mr. Moderator, believe that this meeting tonight is not a re referendum. It's something that if it's voted either way, it's supposed to stick. Thank you. short-sighted to tie the hands of a town 
that we are critically ill-funded. It's not anything to say that one project should be voted on or not voted on. It all seems to be uh, voted for town meetings, which is something that everyone should attend. But by the same token, um, tying our hands with the future, but I don't know what that future is, so it's going to be on the short side of the day. Thank you. Okay, I've been recognized with the microphone this time. Milligan for Lincoln Street. Okay. Um, could, you, could you repeat your name again? Elizabeth Milligan for Lincoln Street. Could you please um, speak to how I don't want to tie hands, I don't like uh, unlevel playing fields, but I would like to know how a yes vote would be tying our hands when what it is is an unbinding agreement. And by the road, we're just giving our opinion to the town. I don't understand this sense of very strong uh, pushback from people who say, vote no, and I don't know why it is unbinding. I mean, what's, what's the deal? What's the big deal? Could you please explain that? So, selectly, irrespective of what the child says, state law, the selectmen have Speak the ability to make that decision. The town meeting does not. So whatever you do this evening is advice. And it's only advice. It is not by you. Okay, and I just have to make another comment, okay? All right. Um, I have worked, as you know, um, Mr. Moderator, on economic development for the town. I'm very concerned about that. As I understand it, the amount that we are allowed to discharge from the wastewater treatment plant is based on the number of permits the Department of Environmental Protection issues. And what I'm concerned about is what direction are the issues of permit going in and how much room are we going to have for economic future economic development for our town. Uh, Department of Public Works. Aaron McCloskey, Director of Public Works, Aaron McCloskey, Director of Public Works, Aaron So we just received their draft permit from the EP uh, for the next cycle, and the uh, permit limit has stayed the same at 1.45 million gallons. And, and that's what we have always had, or um, for the last 10 years, the permit's been. So you, you don't think it will be changing in the future? The, the current permit is 10 years old, um, and we have a draft permit that is going to go, go through a public comment phase um, that will open up next month, and I, I don't anticipate in the next decade that it will decrease. And, and would it be for another 10 years? Is that what that is? Correct. I don't think the, uh, the expiration date hasn't been solidified yet, but one would assume the last permit was for 10 years, and it would be some similar type of time frame. Okay. And do you agree that that 21% that uh, Mr. Calabria, I referenced earlier, is that correct that we have that much left? Per the permit, we have 35% capacity available. 35% available. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, thank you. What, what's my right? Thanks, Melissa Levine, here at Lantern Lane. I just wanted to address one of Elizabeth's questions with my own personal take as selectman. So even though this is a non binding vote, I personally, as a selectman, think that a non binding vote still has a lot of sway. So if it was a yes result, it would affect my decision individually as a selectman if ever faced with a decision to sell our water and sewer. So I think it's very important that everyone here treat this vote as if it's binding because it might affect the outcome of a future vote of the Board of Selectmen. Okay, no further questions. I will uh, ask you to vote. I'm done. Okay, I have one more. So uh, if you've got a question, you've got to come up to your microphones here before I recognize you. So go ahead. Wait, we're right about Staple Ridge. Um, I've been hearing from everybody on the stage. Has anybody who's brought this petition to the town for a warrant spoken? <coughs> Certainly the presenter has. I imagine there's people in the audience. Okay, I'm going to add. Just quickly, uh, this is Rick Maynard from 34 Lincoln Street. 
You know, the first time I heard about this was when I got the uh, robocall from the town of Maine, you know, the automatic call telling me there was this meeting. I don't, know, I don't know where all this came from or how it was publicized, but is there a better way that every citizen can find out about this? What enough time we can study the matter and find out why this is happening, why these ideas are coming out? Do we have a way of everybody getting subscribes to maybe email notices, text notices, something like that? It's been on the town website and it has been published in the newspaper. It was published in the newspaper? Too bad I don't subscribe. Uh, we need about 10 ways to get the word out these days, you know how it is. We're all looking in our own little corners for information. All right. The selectmen also gave a uh, meeting at the high school where they asked people to come and comment. And so that was done four weeks ago, five weeks ago. <coughs> Okay, I've been out of the loop. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to call for the vote. Uh, I would like to uh, record the vote in numbers, so I'm going to ask you to use ballot number one and to mark your ballots. Yeah.
All those in favor?